This is a flexure-based six-axis positioner called a hex blade. It utilizes bent blade flexures, also known as folded leaf spring flexures, to achieve six degrees of freedom, three orthogonal translations, and three orthogonal rotations. Motion stage positioners that achieve six degrees of freedom are desirable because they can assume any location and orientation by displacing in any direction or by rotating about any axis limited only by how far the positioner can move. Thus, six-axis positioners, such as the famous Stuart platform design, can generally accommodate the most demanding kinematic requirements for enabling advanced mechanism-based applications, such as flight simulators, 3D printers, and assembly stages, to name just a few. If such applications also require high-precision motions with ranges approximately less than 10% of the mechanism's overall size, flexure bearings provide the most promising low-cost solution for guiding such motions while preventing backlash, hysteresis, and wear. This flexure-based six-axis Texas Positioner Masterpiece was created by Professor Dennis Brower's group at the University of Twente. The Hexblade Positioner was designed as part of an effort funded by DARPA to enable spider-like robots to 3D print large trust structures in space as they orbit Earth. The Hexblade was designed to rapidly raster scan the robot's deposition nozzle for enabling micron resolution printing while compensating for vibrations in all directions as the robot simultaneously crawls along the structure being printed. Fast speeds were necessary to increase print efficiency and respond to high frequency vibrations, while large ranges were necessary to increase the robot's high resolution print volume and respond to large amplitude vibrations. Although this robot was an initial sketch of the concept, in the end its print head was replaced by the Hexblade Positioner. The Hexblade Positioner consists of a rigid stage joined to two different but similar sets of three identical decoupled actuation limbs arranged in an axisymmetric configuration. Each decoupled actuation limb consists of a bent blade flexure that joins the Positioner's stage to an intermediate rigid body. This intermediate rigid body is joined to another rigid body by two blade flexures, which lie on parallel planes that are perpendicular to the axis of the bent blade flexures crease, shown by the dash blue lines. The last rigid body in the serial chain of flexures is mechanically grounded as indicated by the hatched black lines. A contact-free linear voice coil motor is positioned between the two blade flexures so that the motor can impart a force on the intermediate rigid body at a location halfway down the length of the blade flexures to minimize their parasitic motion error. The parallel blade flexures constitute each decoupled actuation limb's actuator bearing, which serves the purpose of guiding the trans translational motion of the linear voice coil motor and ensures that its outer cylindrical magnet and its inner copper coil remained aligned over the actuator's full stroke. Note that the actuator's heavier magnet half is attached to the grounded rigid body so that the positioner is required to accelerate as little mass as possible. The bent blade flexures constitute the decoupled actuation limbs as decoupling flexures, which decouple their corresponding actuator from the motions induced by the other five actuators in the system. Thus, although the bent blade flexures stiffly pass the translation motion of their actuators along their creases axis to the system stage to successfully drive it, if any of the other actuators in the system drive the stage, the bent blade flexures will deform to minimize the effect of those stage motions on the bent blade flexures corresponding actuator. Systems with decoupled actuators can drive their stages over large ranges of motion without imparting harmful jamming forces on their actuators and can do so at high speeds since such limbs minimize the mass that needs to be moved in the system to achieve any given motion. Note that with the exception of the single redundant constraint contributed by the two parallel blade flexures within each actuator bearing, the hex blade is exactly constrained and thus achieves high precision. Moreover, the hex blade is not under constrained, which means that when its stage is held fixed with respect to the grounded rigid bodies, all the intermediate rigid bodies are locked in place by the flexures and are not free to vibrate. Not being under constrained is favorable for achieving high speeds. Finally note that the design's axisymmetric and uniquely bent blade flexure topology ensures minimal thermal drift of the system stage as its flexures expand and contract when subjected to fluctuating ambient temperatures. A MATLAB tool was created to analytically calculate the performance capabilities of any geometric version of the Hexblade design. The geometric features that define the system's flexure topology were parameterized according to the 10 independent variables shown here. 
Once these parameters are specified for a particular design, the MATLAB tool can generate an image of the design so that users are able to visualize what the resulting version looks like for the parameter combination entered. The MATLAB tool then generates a stiffness and mass matrix to analytically model the design's speed and range capabilities. Specifically, the tool calculates the design's first natural frequency as a measure of its maximum open loop driving speed by identifying the square root of the smallest eigenvalue of the inverse of the design's mass matrix matrix multiplied by its stiffness matrix. The tool then calculates the normalized range value to determine the design's full range of motion compared to its overall size. To calculate this number, the maximum displacement over which the system stage can be driven by the design's six actuators must first be determined along each of its six axes. The three translations, X trans, Y trans, and Z trans, and the three rotations, X theta, Y theta, and Z theta. These individual ranges are each calculated using the design's stiffness matrix to determine the six actuators is force magnitude ratio that drives the system stage along the desired axis. The ratio's force magnitude multiplier is then increased until 1, the actuator with the largest force either reaches its peak force, or 2, any portion of the design collides with any other portion of the design, or 3, any of the flexure elements yield or buckle. The resulting displacement is then recorded and the same process is repeated to drive the system stage along the same axis but in the opposite direction. The absolute values of both direction displacements are then summed together to produce the maximum displacement desired along the particular axis of interest. After all of the maximum displacements corresponding to all six axes have been calculated, the design's normalized range, R norm, is then calculated according to this equation, where W1 through W6 are weight factors that are specified according to the importance of each degree of freedom according to a particular application of interest. X, Y, and Z are the side lengths of the smallest rectangular volume inside of which the design could fit. The MATLAB tool then performs a sweep of the design's parameters and calculates these values, i.e. the speed and range of each design version to ultimately generate the boundary of the hex blade's full performance space for a specific set of weight factors. The properties of high strength 7075 aluminum were used and each of the 10 independent geometric parameters were swept from the minimum to the maximum values in this table using the resolution increment shown. For each combination of the parameters considered during the sweep, the MATLAB tool checks if the resulting design version is geometrically compatible. In other words, it checks that no features overlap or intersect like those shown red in the animation. For each design version that is deemed geometrically feasible, the tool calculates and plots the design's first natural frequency versus its normalized range as shown by each blue dot in this plot. Our lab's optimization tool called Blot was used to identify the rigorous boundary that circumscribes the full performance capability space. Note that the weight factors used to generate the performance capability plot shown were customized to the 3D printer application for which the hex blade was originally created. One degree of rotation was weighted similarly to one millimeter of translation. Note that the red colored portion of the plot's boundary represents all the optimal versions of the design which achieve the largest speed and range combinations possible. Two versions of the Hexblade positioner design were selected from the optimal red portion of the performance capability plot. One of the optimal designs, called Design Version 1, achieves a lower speed over a larger range while the other design, called Design Version 2, achieves a higher speed over a smaller range. The 10 independent geometric parameters corresponding to each of the two optimal design versions versions selected are shown here. Since both the stiffness and mass matrices are required to calculate the mode shapes and corresponding natural frequencies of any version of the hex blade design, a modal analysis was performed on the two optimal design versions using finite element analysis to verify the analytical matrices of the MATLAB tool. SOLIDWORKS was used to perform the finite element analysis using the same constituent material. Animations of the resulting finite element analysis generated mode shapes are shown here for design version 1 with their corresponding natural frequencies. Animations of the same first six mode shapes generated using our MATLAB tool are also shown with their analytically calculated natural frequencies. Similar results are shown here as they pertain to design version 2. Note from these animations that both the finite element analysis and the MATLAB generated mode shapes are in good correspondence and that all of their analytically calculated natural frequencies are between 0.3% and 9.3% error compared against the finite element analysis generated results. The average error calculated using both designs natural frequencies is 2.6%. 
Design version 1 was fabricated to experimentally validate its performance capabilities. The number and kind of unique parts fabricated are shown here, with the exception of the six linear voice coil motors and the stage, which was additively fabricated out of Ultimaker Tough PLA. The other parts were cut from high strength 7075 aluminum alloy sheets using wire EDM. Six 14 millimeter reflector pearl markers were attached to the system stage to enable camera based sensing. Four Vicon cameras were mounted on a large frame, which was assembled around the fabricated hex blade positioner. As its stage was driven, the four cameras would simultaneously track and triangulate the locations of each reflective pearl marker on the system stage to determine the stage's resulting position and orientation at any given time. Frequency sweep plots were able to be generated by tracking the system stage in this way after driving it with actuation signals that swept from 1 hertz to 80 hertz as shown. Bode plots of the three translational degrees of freedom, as well as the three rotational degrees of freedom, were generated. Note from the plots that the measured natural frequency of 26 Hz corresponding to the MATLAB models' first natural frequency is similar to the analytical results of 26.02 Hz reported previously. Thus, we successfully verified and validated our MATLAB tool using finite element analysis and experimental testing. We used the tool to optimize a new flexure-based six-axis positioner which we designed and then fabricated to demonstrate that it achieves the target performance capabilities required for our DARPA 3D printing application. If you'd like to learn more about the Hexblade Positioner, you can read more about it in our published journal article. A link to the paper is provided in the description below. Finally, I'd like to acknowledge my student ZD Yang who did the brunt of the work to make this positioner a reality. Thanks for watching The Facts of Mechanical Design.